Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our live podcast event from Funhouse Pizza in Lee's Summit. How about that? Big crowd here tonight. We're going to talk about the news of the day, and you'll hear from Americans as fed up with what's happening as we are. Are you fed up? (laughs) Yeah. With 140 days until the midterm election and 944 days remaining in the Biden presidency, this is Dale Carter's America. From the heart of flyover country, he's not on the far right, and he's certainly not on the far left. Like you, he's somewhere in the middle. This is Dale Carter's America. So I'm going to blow through some news, and then we're going to get to some of uh, your thoughts. And really, as I've told the audience here tonight, Kurt, um, anything that they want to weigh in on, we would love to hear their opinions yeah, on. Yeah, absolutely. That's what this is all about. Yeah. Uh, in case you don't know, in, in the Ronald Reagan shirt, I am Dale Carter, and he is Kurt Wheeler, and this is Dale Carter's America. Uh, top of the news, you may have heard um, this story. Two El Monte, California police officers were shot and killed in the line of duty uh, last Tuesday. And uh, there's been a lot on this, Kurt. Uh, the L.A. District Attorney, uh, Gascon, he is under fire. The San Francisco Attorney, uh, District Attorney has been recalled by the voters. Even in San Francisco, they are fed up with the lawlessness that is going on. And um, L.A. may be next because the thug that did this, who basically died by suicide at a cop's hand. Um, let me guess. Let, let me guess. Let me guess. He had a previous conviction. Yes. <laughs> How previous did I conviction. Know? Go yeah. figure. <laughs> and, you know, because these woke district attorneys are turning these people right back out, that's the problem. And, and how many of you folks here, just by your applause, are legal gun owners in Missouri or Kansas? All right. Okay. These idiots that are running the show, they've got this framework going on a new gun law because they've got to do something. Yeah, anything. Do got something. Got to do something. Jump up and down. Stand on your head. Anything. How about, how about enforce the damn laws? Absolutely. Put absolutely. these people in jail. <laughs> you don't have enough jails, you build more. Yeah, absolutely. Let's All do right. it. Next on the news, maybe you've seen this, the uh, governing body for uh, swimming, right, has said that if... If you're not transitioned by 12 when you hit puberty, you are what you are. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, my God. Really? So what is that going to mean for uh, Leah, you know, the guy who's breaking all the records on the women's side? I don't know. He's going to have to find another sport, I guess. He could play, uh, uh, I don't know, he could crochet or something. Yeah, men's swimming. Yeah, he could go back to 432nd place or whatever he was. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're born yeah. with what you're born with. You know, and, and unless you had surgery before 12, now how many parents are going to rush out and get their kids maimed before they're 12 years old? I, I mean, uh, some, unfortunately, some. Yeah. The, speaking, uh, speaking of jail, I mean, if there's, a, if, there's a, uh, if there's a proper place for jail, it might be for those parents. Yeah, perhaps. You know, you have to have a license to drive a car. You don't have to have a driver, a license to father a kid. You just, you know, it just happens. Speaking of which, uh, there's no decision yet from the Supreme Court on Roe versus Wade, but we are bracing ourselves for the violence that will come if Roe versus Wade is overturned. And, and I, you know, I think there's probably a pretty good sense in this crowd that um, we're a pro-life crowd. Would would that be true, for the most part? Yeah. Okay. All right. But even we are smart enough to realize that if Roe versus Wade is overturned, it does not end abortion. It sends it back to the states, and each state will craft their own policy. Yeah, absolutely. I've said this on on the podcast before, but uh, the ending of Roe v. Wade is not the end of the fight. It is the beginning of the fight. And and we need to make sure that we're pushing for pro-life legislation in Missouri, in Kansas, and across the country, because getting rid of Roe versus Wade just gets rid of the federal, uh, the federal, you know, Supreme Court decision on abortion. So we need to keep fighting. Absolutely. All right. Uh, maybe you heard this. Uh, there's a red tsunami coming. Have you heard that? Yeah. yeah. It's uh, coming in 140 days. They'll just getting all the applause lines in. That's- it it it's already come to Texas. I mean, did you hear what happened in Texas? There was a seat on the border held by Democrats for 151 years 
Okay, a Mexican-born Republican woman whose husband is um, a border guard, right? Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, um, she flipped that seat. Okay, uh, Obama won it by 25 points when he ran for president. Biden won it by double digits, and for the first time in 151 years, that is a Republican seat now. Absolutely, more so, of that. More of that. So there's there's more of that coming. Okay, speaking of. We just have to do something. Biden, who will do anything except drill, uh, is considering now a federal gas tax holiday, which will cut uh, gas prices by 18 cents a gallon. Boy, that'll make a big dent. All right. That's like that. uh... He he hasn't done it yet. He is considering it yeah. because, you know, gas prices, yeah, yeah it, your order's Con- consider up, it, Consider it being considered. That's what he's telling us. Yeah. Same time, he's also considering student loan forgiveness. Yeah. How many of you in here have had a student loan? Yeah. Yeah. Now, show of hands isn't going to help us. Hey! Yeah. How many of us paid off our own student loan? Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. Not yet, but and working on it. We're working on it, though, right? Okay, so when Joe Biden decides uh, to have mortgage forgiveness, I'll be on board with that. Okay. <laughs> so that's, that's my applause line. Yeah! Yeah! All right. How about car loan forgiveness or, uh, you know, other things like that? Yeah. If you watch closely enough of the news, you'll see that there is a company line, okay? Uh, the, the, there's the line that they all go out to the talking head shows with, right? And this week... The line that they've all been given, and I've seen supercuts on this, and, and Kurt's really great at putting supercuts together. But the supercut this week is a recession is not inevitable. Should Americans be prepared for a recession? In your view, is a recession in the United States inevitable? No. Why not? Look, you're, you're talking about the significant progress we've made in making sure. We don't have supply chain backups. Well, I don't think a recession is inevitable. They are all saying a recession is not inevitable. Yeah, I mean, not inevitable. That's a pretty low bar, right? I mean, it's still probably going to happen. It's just not inevitable, you know? Well, the chances are we're already in one. It's like saying that it's probably not going to rain today, you know? Yeah. It might not rain, but it might. Yeah. All right, more uh, January 6th hearings today. Anybody uh, take a gander at that? Uh, <laughs> I'd rather they, watch Judge Judy, to be yeah. honest. <laughs> why are they doing these January 6th hearings? Anybody? Anybody? No, knock Trump down. All right. Uh, it's a distraction. It's because they don't have anything. This is all they have. This is it. Orange Man Bad is the uh, the campaign slogan for 2020. 2022 and 2024 and i'll tell you what we're not going to have it we're going to make america great again <laughs> kurt wheeler ladies and gentlemen. thank you thank you <laughs> well you know uh an aside to that i don't know if you saw this in the news or not but colbert the uh, the late night guy his staff breached the capitol okay. insurrection yeah no 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 they their, their hands were slapped it's like, okay, don't do that again. Meanwhile, there are people who were part of January 6th. Now, you know, I'm not going um, to apologize for them. They're a bunch of knuckleheads, and they should be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. But they shouldn't be held for 18 months in a jail without habeas corpus. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what? I'm going to go one step further. I think that uh, Colbert's staff going into the Capitol, it's worse than 9-11. It's the worst thing that's <laughs> happened maybe in American history. And I think, you know... That's the narrative, so it's worse than 9-11, worse than, uh, yeah, so there you go. All right. Um, on, on a recent episode of our podcast, we talked about um, uh, the bingo card that they have in the White House somewhere. It's like, uh, we've got an opening here. Okay, who haven't we picked? Which box haven't we checked? Yeah. Okay, we've checked another box today. Is Did it, you see this is one? Is it Two-Spirit? Uh, it's a Native American. Ah. Okay. Well, Pres- isn't Two Spirit a Native American thing? That is, I guess, Two Spirit. Is that her name? No, 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 no. I've got That's her name. That's the two. You're, you're, you got to catch up to the times, Dale. Oh, well, it's yeah. LGBT2 XYZ, blah, blah, blah. W X Y Z L M N O P. Yeah. 
Sometimes why? Sometimes why? Because <laughs> I'm wearing my, excuse me, Ronald Reagan shirt. Yeah. <laughs> I smell hippies. <laughs> Don't you love that? I smell hippies. That was my hack yeah. attempt at a Ronald Reagan yeah. impression, by the way. I wore that for uh, Jim Dingman. Where's Jim Dingman? This is his place. We're at Funhouse Pizza. He's and, probably making pizza. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I know that one of Jim Dingman's least favorite smells in the world is marijuana. So if you, that's, I smell hippies. All right, so uh, Biden has checked the box with the first Native American to serve as U.S. Treasurer. So again, that office in the White House is still going. They, they look for what we haven't filled yet, which box have we not checked. Uh, they don't check resumes, they check boxes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we have the most... Uh, intelligent and competent, uh, I'm sorry, competent, intelligent and competent White House press secretary maybe we've ever had now. So, And, and thankfully, uh, she, she let us know right away that it's because she's a, a black, lesbian, immigrant, whatever, you know, so. But that wasn't enough. We need more. We need more boxes. So we got to check the rest of the boxes. She checked a lot of boxes. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Joe Biden's great insurance policy is Kamala Harris, because as much as we, we really want to get by the Biden years, we kind of got to suck it up and just take it through that, because we don't want what's behind that. No. <laughs> <laughs> like behind the, door number the two is of the West not is good. Waiting in the wing. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, anybody here think Joe Biden's doing a good job? No. Anybody? I mean, you know. Yeah, nobody. You know, um, I thought maybe we'd have at least one liberal show up, but I don't think no liberals here at all. I you mean, don't have to. You don't have to call yourself out. It's okay. You can keep it to yourself. You could be a progressive. That's more <laughs> polite, right? That's what they want to be called, the progressives. Yeah. Uh, President Biden now facing his highest disapproval rating since he took office. A new Yahoo News YouGov poll shows 56 percent of Americans disapprove of the president's job. A 3% jump from three weeks ago. The poll, also, the poll also gives a grim outlook for Biden's re-election chances. <laughs> I can't even say that with a straight face. Seriously, he can't even stay on a bike. Yeah. I mean, it's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean. I think Lance Armstrong can still take him, and he's only got one ball. Let's... <laughs> the... <laughs> Uh, it's getting I wild already. I don't isn't know it? what to say to that. There's yeah, no follow up. Well, just... fine. More, more registered voters now say they would vote for Donald Trump than Joe Biden. Now, this story was written by my favorites, uh, the folks at NBC News who write the Newswire that I have to rewrite every morning on KFKF to make it somewhat palatable because the line after that says, This comes even as the January 6th House Select Committee has begun to hold its public hearings on the attack on the U.S. Capitol that attempted to overturn the presidential election. Wait, so you mean the January 6th hearing has not boosted Joe Biden's approval numbers? No, they're going the other way. What? I, I find that hard to believe, honestly. I, I know, it's really crazy. Uh, so that's the news of the day. Anything that floats your boat out of that, you know, we'll, we'll get a line. We'll get you up here saying what you want to say. We have a lot of guests here that we want to single out and uh, welcome them to uh, Dale Carter's America. Absolutely. We'll take a quick break, and we'll be right back. We are back on Dale Carter's America, and one of the early believers in our podcast who reached out to me almost immediately and said, what, what can I do? I want to be involved. Is State Farm agent Bob Watson from Blue Springs. Give him a big round of applause. <laughs> you brought some of your own cheering crowd, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, you've been a State Farm agent for a very long time. You've been my personal State Farm agent for 27, some, some of them painful years. <laughs> <laughs> why, a, tell me why you, you felt so passionate about what we're trying to get done here. Well, I, at 75 years old, uh, I've, I've seen a lot. Uh, my father was a war veteran and was uh, at D-Day and got his eye blown out and was wounded on top of that. Um, <clears throat> I've, uh, I just feel like that uh, we're, we have become such a disrespectful country in so many ways, and, and uh, uh, it bothers me that I feel like we're going in the wrong direction. Uh, I see things that uh, that I never, I never thought I'd ever see as a child, that I'd ever get to a point where I was so frustrated with decision-making, moral compass, uh, wanting to blame somebody else. I mean, I watch every time I see Biden, nothing's ever his fault. Well, you know what? Things that happen with, with, in my business, um, <laughs> they're not my fault many times, but 
I still have to take responsibility. It's my shingle hanging out for 48 years. It's hung out there, and if a client and customer has a, an issue or a problem, it's my job to make sure that it gets resolved, but I don't see that in Washington anymore. It's how do I dodge the bullet? How do I, how do I pass the buck on to somebody else? You know, I guess I, I look back and I think as how many times I wish that we still had a Harry Truman around to be able to say, you know what, the, same thing. the buck stops here. Yeah. You know, this is, this is happening under my watch and where does it end? And it just, so, you know, when I was able to, uh, to listen and, and listen to you and Kurt and uh, you know, we have we have so many of the same ideals and and uh, and my lord I'm I'm certainly not perfect I know that 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 uh, you know I, I always have room for improvement but I just feel like no one really cares about how do I help fix this you know I mean eh. I, I, but I see Republican friends of mine that say, well, I don't like this, I don't like that. What have you done to help change it? What, yeah. When have you stepped up and said, you know, I need to do this? Uh, people that listen to this broadcast, I hope they're doing what I'm doing, and that is send it in a text or an email and say, hey, give these guys a listen. They're really spot on in what their feelings are. And so. Well, you know, when we started the podcast, we started it on the day Joe Biden was inaugurated. And I took him at his word. He said, give me a chance, right? I'm going to be the guy who's going to bring this country back together. I'm not the crazy guy who was tweeting all the time. Give me a chance. And I said, okay, we'll give you a chance. And at every turn, I felt like he took the wrong turn. And Robert Gates, who was Obama's defense secretary, famously said, um, Joe Biden has basically wrecked everything he's ever touched. And he's never run anything. And now he's allegedly running the country. He's never had a real job. Yeah. So what I will say there is we keep talking about these days, and the days are getting shorter uh, until the midterm election. But what Kurt and I will do when we have this red tsunami, we will hold the Republicans' feet to the fire, too. Absolutely. You know, because it, it's on both sides. And, and I'm glad that, that we've got, um, is it Doug Fristo? Doug? Here. Yeah. Doug is here from the Convention of States, and we had uh, the Convention of States Kansas director on our uh, podcast not that long ago, um, and, and they are, are big on term limits. They want to have a convention to have amendments to the Constitution for term limits. Now, I didn't believe in term limits for a long time. I thought they were, uh, they were indicative of a lazy electorate, but Bob, we have a lazy electorate. Absolutely. That's the problem. That's Absolutely. why, even on our side, Chuck Grassley in um, Iowa, was just nominated for his eighth term to the United States Senate. He will be 89 years old in September. And he's gonna get reelected because he's Chuck Grassley, it's Iowa, he's gonna get reelected. <laughs> We've gotta do something about that. So um, that's, you're spot on with your point here. Um, Bob has brought some goodies along with him and my wife Jennifer is somewhere with the um, sign up sheets and all that. You can uh, register our crowd here and you got some like $10 gift cards from Whataburger, some shirts you brought back from the State Farm Convention. Actually, I, I didn't bring them back. I actually went and a friend of mine that I've ordered over the years made these up for oh, me really? uh, right. the last couple of weeks and I thought maybe everybody loves a good golf shirt. So. Yeah. You're welcome to that as well. And then we, we have a couple of uh, Yeti uh, coffee uh, drink mugs that uh, we'll give away and just some fun stuff. Any of the red bags over there, yeah. there, there are things to do, grocery lists, there are magnets for, 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 the, for your refrigerator, but any of that stuff over there, everybody can just grab a bag. You're more than welcome to them. Now, so. you brought some folks. I'm one of them. You brought some other customers. Who all has Bob Watson as their insurance agent? Let's hear from you by applause. <laughs> yeah, we got a few in the back over there. The back, <laughs> yeah. They're hiding. <laughs> yeah. And we talk about this a lot when we talk about you. You're a local guy. You've been there for a long time. You've got a great staff. Terry in your office has, has held my hand through a lot of things over the last 27 years. Um, how important is that to have a face that you know, somebody who's one of your neighbors? You know, the, the slogan for State Farm for so long was like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. How, you know, how important is that versus, you know, saving a couple of bucks on an 800 number with a gecko or some other damn thing? Well, it's, it's so true. <clears throat> Most people, um, and I know the younger generation, the millennials, they'll tell me, you know, I really don't need a lot of counseling. You're not my dad. You're not my principal. But, but, and I always tell them, that's fine, and I'll be glad to text you. I'll be glad to email you. But when, when, the tough, when the road gets tough and you have a problem, 
you know, and maybe your house catches fire or you have a bad car wreck, I'll just send you a text. You know, if that, that's what you like and you don't want any advice. And so I, I just feel like in, in my career, uh, uh, a relationship's important. Uh, I've had homes burn to the ground. I've delivered death claim checks from life insurance. I've had cars total. I've had young kids killed in car wrecks and I've had to go to the funeral and 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 just I've seen some real tragedies and the problem is is that we I think most people want a face uh, somebody to talk to to give them advice I'll give you a story that, that short and sweet I've had a family insured uh, grandma grandpa mom and dad all four of the boys one of the boys decided a couple of two or three years ago to he wanted to <clears throat> cancel his insurance and he went online and I said well just make sure that you've got the proper liability limits and you don't want to have something awful happen and then you're left holding the bag no no everything's cool or whatever well long and the short of it he went with with an online company and he took the minimum state liability limits of 25,000 50,000 which you hurt somebody or kill somebody in a car wreck <laughs> that's peanuts yeah. and I said to him just be really careful Brian because I don't want something to happen to you I've seen people that have gotten their wages garnished because they of a the courts will give the moon away they don't they don't they always side with the person that's gotten hurt and I, and I understand that's human nature but he did this and a couple of years later he was involved in a really bad car wreck and the person was paralyzed and he had t twenty-five fifty, and the I think the court awarded like eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars. He'll he'll have his wages garnished for the rest of his life and his spouse until this thing gets paid because somebody's got to pay it. Whatever the insurance limit is, when it hits that limit, everything else is out of your pocket. So, you know, uh, you just have to you have to be able to relate to people and let them know that hey, if you've got an issue or a question give us a call I, I want to be there and the folks that work for me are phenomenal been with me for many years they're kind they're compassionate and so you know I just feel like that's important um, because I feel like a lot of places in this country you can't get any good service anymore you yeah. you call your cable company whatever and it's like you can't talk to anybody <laughs> they're in India yeah. <laughs> and I, I, I wear hearing that. aids I and so I literally had that last week I, I called a <laughs> I'm not gonna say where. I had a support number. I called and it was an Indian guy. Like and it was like. And his name was Bob. English. Yeah. His name was Bob. <laughs> I, I can't understand him. Plus I wear. Not Bob, you and then yeah. another Bob. <laughs> you know, and I wear hearing aids on top of it, and it's like, you know, slow down. I yeah. can't. I can't yeah. hear you. So yeah. yeah. All right, Bob Watson, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. give him a big round of Thanks, applause. Thanks, Bob. Big believer, early believer in our podcast. All right, from here, I don't know where we're going. So. One of you is going to need to pick up the ball, or else we'll just uh, Sean, we'll take Sean. it from here. Who we got? Sean. 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 Who, Let's who's go, Sean? Sean. Sean. Dale, nice to meet you. All right. Hi, Kurt. Kurt. All right. Nice so you're running you too, for Jackson County Executive? No. No. I'm running. <laughs> close. He's just saying that so he could get on the podcast. I'm I'm running for Jackson County Legislature. Ah, Legislature. Okay, yeah. got you. Which district? Uh, sixth district, right here in Lee Summit. All right. So everything essentially nice the, the essentially the southeast corner. Of, uh, of Jackson County, all of Lee Summit, a little bit of Raytown, all the way out to Lone Jack. Okay, why are you running? Well, I will tell you, there's two things. One is we need conservative representation on the legislature. No kidding. <laughs> uh, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so that would be me. I've, I've been a candidate twice uh, for state rep. My, my conservative credentials are very clear. I serve on the Republican committee. And I will say this, that I have two opponents in the primary who have been city council people here in Lee Summit, um, who've never reflected any level of conservative values, but they have filed as Republicans. Yeah. So Rhinos? I, that I, seems to be the big term. Seems like, right? <laughs> I, I try not to call people names, but yeah, I, yeah. I try to accurately and fairly characterize what I see, and that's, that's what I can see. Uh, so I've always had a, a heart to serve. Um, I have an ex-wife who was adamantly opposed to it, and I put family first. So while I was married, I didn't run for anything. Um, I have, you got out of that deal, though, and now you're running. <laughs> you know, <laughs> 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 you 
out of the frying pan into the fire. Uh, so so the, the biggest thing facing Jackson County is the potential for uh, reassessment of our property values. Oh, my God. Uh, How much is, more can our taxes go up in Jackson County? It's insane. My property taxes in Lee Summit are uh, almost $10,000 a year. Uh, okay, you win. <laughs> mine aren't that bad, but the mine are going up. And Anybody else Jackson County here? Where's, where's Jackson County? Applause, make yeah. noise. Thank you. They're so good. They just put their hands up, Kurt. Yeah, I know, yeah. Nobody wants to clap for that. Fair hey, point. Hey, amen. So, so aside from aside from property taxes and assessments and and really, I really like to be a troublemaker. And in all likelihood, I will still be in the minority. Oh, you would definitely on the be in the minority. Yeah. Right. Uh, there's some great at-large candidates running, so maybe maybe this red wave that we're going to see will will change things. Yeah. But bottom line is, we need a vocal minority, and and I am I'm somebody who talks a lot and puts my voice out there, and I'm not afraid to say what kind of underhanded things are going on. The last thing I'll say is that the legislative overreach or the overreach that we saw on the part of our county uh, in mandates and restrictions and yeah. things that they say are for our safety. Um, when somebody from the government tells you they're doing something for your safety, uh, you need to be pretty suspicious. Yeah. And uh, we weren't suspicious enough, and uh, we, you know, we let them get away with it. But, but we need to have somebody that's going to be there to try to stop it or put the brakes on it when I can. Well, I, I give you a lot of kudos for running in Jackson County. It, it will be an uphill battle even if you win. My friend Jeannie Lauer has been on the Jackson County Legislature for a while, and she's banging her head against the wall. But, but that's what you got to do. you got to make noise, bang your head against the wall to get something done. That is precisely correct. So August 2nd, primary vote. Uh, if, if you can't be in town on August 2nd, we've already opened the, the absentee balloting, which I think I, I love to see people vote on Election Day. I think it's I do too. critically yeah. important. But if you can't be here and you can only remember my name for the next 24 hours, go now and vote for Sean. You have a website you want to hit? I do. I even have some literature in my pocket. Uh, I've been out knocking doors and, and seeing people today, so I'll, I'll put that around. But it is Sean, S-E-A-N, Smith. Most people can spell that for Mo. Dot com. Okay. Best of luck to you. Thank you. All right. Guys. Thanks Sean for coming Smith, by. Thank you. you bet. Thanks. Cheers. Thanks for coming up. Who's next? Come on up. Yeah, my name's William Douglas Fristo. And you're with the Convention of States. I'm with Convention of and States. And we did a whole Missouri. episode on Convention of States. Yeah. Two, two actually, I, we did two. I, Okay, we, okay. we talked about it one time, and then we had the uh, the direct state yeah. director from Kansas on. Kurt and I in are Kansas, big believers yeah. in this, um, and you know the the things that you stand for, the three things that you're trying to get done, mm -hmm. and everybody should know. If you don't know, all of the amendments to the Constitution, 27, right? We're at 27 amendments. Yeah, I think I that's right. So. All of them originated in Congress. Okay, of course. Congress is never going to limit their own terms. Or their power. Period. Or their power. That's a or great a point. Or a balanced budget amendment, or yeah. most of other things. That's so the is. convention of states. I, I guess I'm taking some of your uh, okay. thunder away from you. You know what they're trying to do is go the uh, all the other way, which is use Article Five of the convention or of the uh, Constitution in order for the people to propose amendments to the Constitution. Now, you've got three things that you want to get done. Yes. Tell the folks what you want to get done. Well, okay. Three things are in the cards. Let me show you. First thing is, I don't know how do you write, read this. Okay. I can read them if you want yeah, me to. Read that off to me. All right, I'm going to read them off uh, because these are important. I know Impose what fiscal right. restraints on the federal government. There you go. Yeah. Yes. A federal government, by the way, that is $30 trillion in the hole. Yeah, yeah. And as interest rates go up, now I'm not one of the real smart financial people here, but as interest rates go up, what will that do to the $30 trillion we're already in debt? It'll just keep going up. Okay, uh, point number two, a second amendment, if you will. Limit the power and jurisdiction of the federal government. Yeah. And three term limits on Congress and federal officials. Yes. Yeah. And that, in that includes judges, federal judges as well. All right, so there okay. you go. That is a Convention of States, yep. and they are at conventionofstates.com. And Doug here is the district captain for Missouri, HD31. That's, that's Blue Springs. All right. I'm, I'm also the regional co coordinator for the Northeast uh, altogether. Yeah. Uh, Northwest, I mean. Sorry. Now, uh, the last I heard, Kurt, remind me on this, I think we're at 19 states. Yes. 
where it's been approved, right, by both houses of the legislature? Uh, something like that. Yeah. And we have to get to 35 in order to it call is, a convention? Right. And not that far. And we, 38 states to pass any amendments? Yes. I was told that, that there's four more by the end of the year that they think are going to go. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that would, that would uh, get us closer. But this is going to happen. We have to make it happen as fast and as hard as we can. Now, by the way, Missouri has passed this. They've also passed last year, through this whole trouble we had, they, they got rid of a, sun, a sunset provision, which was passed originally. That means they can't knock it out now. Right. It's going to go forever until we get this done. So this doesn't happen fast, but it's, it's got to happen. Now, the reason why this is in there in the Article 5 of the Constitution, if you haven't read it, go back and read it, because most people don't know what it is. There's two ways of, to amend the Constitution. First one is the federal, federal House and the Senate. All right, they can do what they need to do. But the states can call a convention of states. And it's, it's complicated because you have to have this, this one thing we have here that we put together. Everybody that's in this thing, the 19 states, have approved exactly what we have. They can't vary. They can't vary it. Right, because there are some people who think that once you do this, it's going to be a free-for-all. Yes. And it might impact other amendments yes. like the Second Amendment. Yes. Right. They're, they talk about it being a runaway runaway convention. They're right. afraid of a runaway convention. But the, the thing is that, yeah, you can have a runaway convention, but you, we, don't even, we get prote protection because what they're doing is they're sending it back to the Houses of Representatives and the, and the Senate who represent you, who represent everybody. They no, the federal, federal House and, and federal Senate, they don't, they, don't, they don't represent everybody. Okay? Yeah. Okay. So that's wonderful. And, it's, and so there's no way they can stop it. Now, once they do that, they have those 34 states approved. They go to Nancy, Nancy Pelosi if she's there, or any, any uh, House of Representatives. Right. Lead, and, and give them the amendments that they've approved and say, stick these where the sun doesn't shine. I love that. <laughs> huh? That's what we're looking for. All right. That's Con what we need. Convention of States. Give them a big round of applause here. They're getting things Thank done. You. All right. And, and please play, go on to conventionofstates.com and pledge wherever state you're in. Either Which one. I did. I did that. Yes. Okay. Yes, you did. That's why I got a hold of you. That's how you got, you got, got my number. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you very much, Thank folks. You, Good bus. Yep. All right. Mark Zarda. Oh, he's pulling what up you, notes what are you on doing? his you're phone, man. Notes? I got notes. What the hell? I got notes, This is man. a one-hour show. I know. I got notes. They're short <laughs> notes. They're short notes. All right. Right in the right, mic. Right in the mic. Right in the mic. Okay. My biggest closer, problem. Closer. Thank you. My biggest problem with this country, and I did serve for six years in the Marine Corps. Yes. Is, and this goes back to 19, about 73, when John Wayne, he should have won a Grammy for his song, and he didn't. It was the hyphen. And the hyphen says, according to the song, it can either bring us together or it can build a wall. Well, right now we have Italian Americans, German American, Republican American, Democrat Americans. Aren't we all Americans? Yeah. Yes. It, shouldn't that be our number one title? And in my opinion, we need to get rid of all the crap yep. that goes in front of American. And I say that as far as Republican, Democrat, black, red, purple, green, Italian, German, Polish, whatever. Get rid of all the bullshit. And we're just Americans. What about the trans? Eh, you know, <laughs> they are Americans. <laughs> You know, they, they, they are Americans to each their own. And exactly. I mean, I, you say this on the radio all the time. I but do. yes, to each their own. I really don't give a damn what you L G B W X Y Z, whatever the hell. Element Q and right. sometimes Y. Yeah, it is what it is. But yeah, just be an American. And I honestly think this may not be real popular. We need to get rid of the far right. We need to get rid of the far left and meet in the middle. Just like, you know, we had a lot of great senators that used to do this. John McCain was one of them. I personally loved John McCain. I met him one time, thought he was great. Absolutely adored the man. But he met in the middle. 
And then Biden was like that at one point, and then he got elected, and he went so far to the frickin' left yeah. that he's out there way out in left field now. Yeah. But we need to meet in the middle. We've said that. On, I've said that on the podcast before. You know, if we're going to have a president, Joe Biden, he needs to be more like Senator Joe Biden was, and now he's being tugged to the far left. And the AOCs of the world, they've disowned him. They don't right. want anything to do with him. And he's trying really hard to be like them. Yeah, he's, they he's won't even say if they'll vote for him in 2024. Yeah, huh? they're not going to vote for him in 2020. He's not running in 2024. Yeah, Kurt. he's not Come running. on. And he's not far enough to the left for them anymore. He's not. And, you know, that's what we need to do. We need to meet in the damn middle. And I think all of us would be a hell of a lot better off if we met in the middle. But nobody wants to do that. It's what's well, good for my party yeah. and my race and my uh, nationality instead of what's good for America. We're all going to hug later, and Mark's going to lead us in kumbaya. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I want to say, too, Mr. Zarda here has listened to, like, every single episode. He always comments on our Facebook stuff. So how about a hand for Mark yeah, Zarda? Yeah, Mark's a good guy. All right. Yeah. You guys are great. All right, buddy. Keep listening. We appreciate you. All right, another Marine. Doug Palmer, come on up here. Got it. All right, Doug. Speak clearly into the microphone. All right, can you hear me? All right. Well, can don't hear look you. at me. Well, look clear. at that. Let's go. Look at them, really. What? Um, <clears throat> what I wanted to talk about was the supposed tax holiday for the gas tax. Uh, what is currently the federal taxes, I believe, 18 cents a gallon. Right which would be 3.6% savings on your $20 fill up or 20 gallon fill up, which is not gonna make a hill of beans to anybody saving $3.60 when they're spending, you know, 100 bucks to fill up their pickup truck or in your case, your little Chevy. Because it yeah. was 88 bucks to fill it the other day. It's, yeah, that sounds right. Yeah. yeah. So. Well, and you know, Barack Obama, I don't know if you've seen this or not, when, when they asked him about doing the gas tax holiday, he called it a gimmick. And yeah, it said, is. We're not going to do it. It is because you know what the real solution is, though. You guys just need to buy electric cars. Yeah, that's it. Why aren't we just buying buy electric an electric cars? car? Okay, Grandholm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You'd save how much a month? You'd save like a hundred bucks a month, right? Yeah, uh, well, I'd pay fifty thousand up front, but you know then. Well, wait a minute. That'd be cheap. <laughs> I, good luck to you finding one for fifty thousand. Yeah, and you're forgetting then the electricity that it's going to take to charge that vehicle. Yeah, yeah. And, and the fact the that fact there's that that no infrastructure. You, do you know where to take it to charge it if you're going to drive cross country? Ninety-eight. Yeah. I don't know. There is no infrastructure. No, there isn't. It, it's all about shame. You know, yes. th there was a time, and this gets back to something Mark Zarda was saying, there was a time in this country when we could disagree over policy, okay? Y you may want to do something with the government that I don't want to do because I don't want to do a whole lot with the government, right? But now it's like we not only disagree over, over policy, now it's like you have to die and your whole family has to die and we have to run you out of this country. We can't, we can't just disagree anymore. You know what I mean? Yep. It's you're a fascist. You're a you yeah. know, you're a Nazi. You're a Nazi. You're racist. Hitler. You're worse yeah. than Hitler. That's it. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Worse than Hitler. January 6th, worse than 9-11. Yeah. The, you know, the, uh, the border agents at the border reining in their horses. Worse than what happened during slavery. Yeah. They were beating <laughs> those people. It's freaking unbelievable, man. I'm telling you what. It's crazy. Well, anything else you want to add? Well, yeah, still on the, the gas. Oh, yeah. It's I'm sorry. sorry. I took we you got, down a right. We tend no. to get sidetracked. No, I it's, do that. It's multi-pronged multi because, because they also were talking about issuing gas cards, which are worthless, easy to duplicate, and easy to cheat the government even out of more money than what they lost during the trillions of dollars that the government already gave you. Talking to the mic, Doug. There okay. You go, right there. You got it. Okay. They were talking about using gas cards, which are useless. Because, one, there isn't enough chips to put in them. Two, they're easy to duplicate and very easy to be sold for a couple of dollars here, a couple of dollars there. So th those are useless. The real thing they should do, which Biden already pushed off again, was uh, the leases on public lands. They pushed that off again. It was in the news, I believe, either yeah. today or yesterday. So they're pushing that off again. Unless we drill more holes get more refineries online or build new refineries, uh, there's no way we're going to be energy independent. We have to unleash the power of the United States, unleash the energy, and we can be self-sufficient again and be a net exporter like Trump was and sending it overseas to the countries that need it so they can get away from Putin. You so. want to kill the planet, Doug. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs>
It's 103 <laughs> degrees outside. We already are in climate change. Well, that's true. But you know, humans adapt. I, I've said this before. This planet is 5 billion years old. It's constantly evolving. And to think that we as humans have impacted it that much, that's arrogant on our part. Yes, it is. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's going to constantly evolve. It's going to constantly change. And we as humans have to evolve with it. We always have. Yeah. And so. science will lead the way on all this. And right now what you've got is you've got a political party that is trying to shame you into doing something that's not backed up by science or infrastructure right now. As long as it isn't Fauci science, I will follow it. <laughs> <laughs> Amen to that. Yeah, Amen, Amen to that. That's for Doug. <laughs> Nicely said. All right. All right. Ryan Dirks, ladies hey, and gentlemen. Everybody. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Ryan fought the good fight running uh, for Congress in the 5th yeah. District, taking on Emmanuel Cleaver. That had to be fun. Yeah, it was fun. It was really crazy. There's lots of stories about it, but that was also... That was two years ago, actually. Now, that was two years ago. But I wanted to touch on what the State Farm gentleman... Yes. Was it Bob? Bob Watson. Bob, Bob Watson. Bob's biggest selling point, oh, the, the reason any of you... Oh, my God. My pregnant wife's pizza is up in one call. I have to get my message out. Okay, do it. I'm, I'm number 101. <laughs> the number one reason you all should take all your business to Bob, simply put, is he's a conservative Republican right there. Yes. <laughs> That's it. Amen. Bob, in Amen. fact, on my way out to get my pregnant wife's pizza, I need a business card because I have a big policy right now that's being underwritten by somebody else. I have no idea who the guy is. For all I know, he donates to Planned Parenthood. But I know that Bob doesn't, and I want to keep my money with other conservative Republicans in the community. That's the only reason you need to go talk to Bob and give him your, 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 uh, your business. You know, you can look in the history books. Oh, God, that was almost me. That was 104. I'm 101. <laughs> you look at, like, the history of, like, the Jews. You know, they were put in the ghettos across Europe. Right. And what did they do? They kept their money circling within each other, within each other. And, you know, the Jewish people are doing pretty well right now. And that's a very uh, a strong lesson in the Jewish community is keep your money in the Jewish community. It's a very obvious thing. So please give me a card with you when I'm on my way out, okay? All right, very cool. So Anything else? Any, yeah. any lessons from uh, from, you know, running for Congress? I think that would be... You know, if you have any insight about what that was like or what you learned about the political process. I don't have enough time to tell you. All I can tell you right now is that I'm invincible because I've literally been called every name in the book, <laughs> literally every name in the book. And you know what? It's not true. After you get called all of these names so many times, so publicly too. Yeah. The mayor of Kansas City would dog on me occasionally. You know, not a lot of people know this, but I was teaching because my job is stock market investing, right? For, you know, we manage an office and all of that. And I was down at the uh, barber shops in Kansas City down at 18th and Vine asking the guys like, hey guys, young black guys, what do you guys want to know? Like, what do you guys want? Like, I, what's interesting to you? And the head guy that ran the stop said, I'll tell you what's interesting. Young black men want to know about money and how it works and how to make money and how to be wealthy. And I was like, well, damn, that's my damn day job. Yeah, exactly. I said, why don't I come down here once a week on Thursday? We'll put the Chiefs game on or whatever, whatever Thursday night football is, and we'll talk stocks. All right, awesome. Dale, the first night, there were like 15 or 20 people there. By week four, it was shoulder to shoulder, like 30, 40 people in this little barbershop. And you know who came down to the barbershop to there and said, hey, you better quit hanging out with this white man, this Republican? The mayor of Kansas City. Oh my God, it's my pregnant wife. <laughs> the Pharaoh. The and, Pharaoh and came my, to your yeah, deal. yeah, and and not only that, but my opponent Emmanuel Cleaver said, "Hey, what are you doing with this Republican? Knock it off." The guy says, "Hey, Cleaver, with all due respect, I haven't seen you in like decades. Who are you to tell me?" And if you yeah. go look at the videos of Cleaver around October, November interviews he was giving, he had a really nice haircut because he finally went to the barber shop and said, okay, give me a haircut. <laughs> but the only thing I can say is like, do not be afraid. Look how many people are right in here. You guys, we need city council people. We need school board people. We need yeah. state rep people. What I learned from my election is that the national level is totally hopeless, you guys. They're, I don't care if you like Republicans or Democrats. They are all incestually corrupt. All of them. The only one I think that might be redeemable is Marjorie Taylor Greene, just because she's like been kicked out and banned from everything. Great, so you know yeah. there must be something good there. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, truly, look at Josh Hawley. Yeah. Jo what a loser. The only thing Josh Hawley does is complain about China and what's he actually done? Has he, has he nothing? He hasn't even done anything. The other thing he does is he complains about tech censorship, but then he writes a book about tech censorship and sells it on Amazon. Josh Hawley is a complete loser in my book. I think there's no redeeming Republicans or Democrats at the national level. It's all the state and local level. Look what's happening. I just met this lady who's running. You guys know we, the people of Jackson County. 
She started We the People of Johnson County, amazing lady, started a protest at Warrensburg because they had the uh, the tranny dancing in front of all the kids a couple weeks ago. You guys know about that, yeah, right? right. <clears throat> Drag queen dancing. That's what I'm talking about. It's local. Yep. You think Josh Hawley or Trump or any of the people in D.C. care about the trannies dancing in front of your kids in uh, elementary school? No, but you know who do, do are the two people that we put up and ran and got them to win the Lee Summit School District School Board. Uh, Heather and, uh, uh, Heather and uh, Jennifer are now two staunchly conservative moms on the Lee Summit School Board because we did it in Blue Springs School Board and Grain Valley. Stop watching Fox News. Stop watching cable news. Stop paying attention to the national politics because it's all one giant trick. Yeah. It's never going to change. It's so corrupt. The whole thing's going to implode on itself for better or for worse. Focus on your cities, your schools, and your, your, uh, your state reps and whatnot. Even though I can't stand Parsons, he's a total doofus in my opinion. <laughs> At least he's closer and more impactful than any elected Republican in Washington, D.C. Yeah. You had mentioned Chuck Grassley. Yeah. Chuck Grassley, like again, he's what? He's 80, gonna be 89. 89. What does Chuck Grassley know about a early 20-somethings couple that graduated with student debt? And now I got a little bit of empathy. Maybe Kurt, you do too. We were told in high school, you don't have a choice. You're going to college. You don't have a choice. Yeah. You're going. Okay, fine. I guess. And I'll I have two music degrees, so. <laughs> See, oh my God, are they forgetting <laughs> about me? Did anybody? Did they say 101? They said 101. I did they really? Was yeah. that 101? Yeah. yeah okay, you guys. I've hey, gotta go. I love you, you guys. Okay, just one, don't, quickly. Yeah. I mean, you say the national thing's done. Do you like anybody in the Senate race? Uh, I'm actually, kind of, I don't know. Yes, I'll tell you who I don't like. Yeah. I don't like Billy Long. I don't like Vicki Hartzler, and I don't like whoever the other one is because you guys are elected. And what I'd like to do, and I haven't because just out of decorum and respect, I'd like to stand in front of Vicki and say, Vicki, how long have you been up there? Like 15 years? What have you done? Why right. should I give you my vote? Now, I know that Greitens is controversial, but at least as governor, he was doing a lot of stuff with, um, with uh, uh, the No More Red Tape. He squashed the Ferguson protests. I know that there's a Second Amendment drama, and I'm not too clear on it, okay? Then there's Mark McCloskey, who I kind of admire because he, the, the brunt of American, the darkest part of American culture came to his front step and right. he fought back. So I admire those yeah. two guys, but what I really feel is, even same with Eric Schmidt, I'm not even sure, like, Schmidt, you're the AG of Missouri. Where have you been? I called your office with ballot harvesting names uh, uh, and evidence and uh, video testimony, and you wouldn't return a call. That was in the 2020 election, you guys. That was November and December of 2020. So who do yeah. I like in this Senate? I don't really know, but we I know who I don't McCloskey like. McCloskey on the podcast. He will be on next week. So make sure you're Friday. listening to Dale Carter's America. Friday, coming out Friday morning. It's coming out Friday? Yeah. What the hell do I know? Kurt runs the thing. <laughs> I'm just the pretty yeah. face behind it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So anyway, I, I thought he was really engaging. And okay. I yeah. came out of it thinking, you know, of all of them that are running, I, I think he's got my vote. How he much worse can he do? Well. He How much worse can he do, yeah. you guys? Truly. What is he going to is he going to get us into more overseas endless wars? Yeah. Is he going to vote for endless omnibus spill budgets? Is he going to embrace planned parenthood and the tranny stuff and uh, the cultural marxism and the racial nonsense and the anti-christian? How much worse can Mark McCluskey be? I don't know. I don't yeah. think he can be much worse than uh, the people like uh, who are there right now that say Republican that don't fight for anything. Well, when we get the red tsunami that's coming, we just yeah. got to hold their feet to the fire. Well, you know what they say, elections have consequences, they do. but <laughs> elections have consequences as well. And I mean, have you guys seen anything change between 2020 and this coming election? Yeah. I'm still going to vote. Don't get me wrong. But you, I, I don't know. I don't There's know. been a lot that's changed. My 401k is now a 101k. Yes, that is <laughs> right. Know, gas prices are through the roof and, yeah. you know, you got the border. Yeah. And Never forget this one thing, you guys. Never forget. You guys... Here's the one thing that really I notice separates conservatives from liberals is we have a much better memory of history. Never forget, in Obama's first six months as president back in the year of 2009, when he went off of teleprompter the very first time and the very last time he went off of teleprompter was when he said, well, don't you know, under my green energy plan, energy prices will necessarily skyrocket. Right. That's, yep. hey, hello. It's We're all part this. of the plan. So you guys didn't accept cap and trade. So what do they do? They go back to the drawing board. They say, Green New Deal. That's a great phrase. Green New Deal. Okay, Green New Deal. Okay, it's the same exact nonsense. Same stuff. In fact, we were sitting in my office today 
So in our investment firm, we've got about $65 million, and our clients have been in about 50% cash for a, quite a long time because we saw this coming from a mile away. And what is in ca invested is in a lot of commodities. So we're actually make, doing really well this year. And we sat there and we said, all right, are we going to change? We're six months into the year. Are we going to make any changes? And I said, you guys, do you see any positive news? No. Do you see any attempt to bring energy prices down? No. Do you see any attempt to get people working or jobs back from overseas? No. Do you see any attempt to rein in the big banks or Wall Street or any of that? No. Do you see anything at all where people are genuinely trying, even though Trump left, you know, came, felt came up short in a lot of things, in my opinion. Damn, if the guy didn't just keep cracking skulls as much as he possibly could. Yeah. yeah. Right. Even Amen. though he didn't get. You remember like like when uh, was it Ford was about to go to Mexico and he made it his whole tweet for the week where he wouldn't let off a Ford and like, all right, fine, we'll keep it in America. <laughs> or like, or like, or do you remember when Trump became president and the first thing that happened were all these fortune 500 companies just gave everybody a $2,000 bonus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What in the world? Like, it's not that difficult. So that just shows you how low the bar in politics is. So I, I just think the only thing I can say before I go get this, what pizza is probably my wife, cold. It's about to be cold <laughs> as you guys, please don't go home and just sit around, go get involved, go run, go start. We, the people of wherever the hell you are, because Miss, I apologize. Will you tell me your name one more time? Rachel Gifford. Rachel Gifford. Thank you. I apologize. Rachel told me she goes to the We the People of Jackson County. Well, I'm going to start the one in my county. Mm -hmm. So all she did was start her own. Now she's got dozens, if not you know, 50 or 60 people coming. And boom, you saw the drag show for kids thing in Warrensburg. And you guys went there and you stopped it. Or at least made it known that this is, will not to be tolerated. What did the rest of us do? Dale's got Not his own enough. media outlet with Kurt. <laughs> like, I, all I can say is just get involved. That's yeah. it. That's yeah. it, you guys. Yeah. Sean, thanks for running. I saw Jeff come in here. Jeff Coleman, he's a state rep. Where's Jeff? Thank, hey, he's going to come up here right Jeff after Coleman. me. Jeff Coleman. Yeah. I got I got to go get this pizza. It's all getting right. cold. Ryan Dirks, Ryan Dirks. Nice job. Thank you. Until next time, Thank Dale. You. Good seeing you. I just wanted to, to expand on, on a couple of things that Ryan was just talking about because, I mean, there was so much great stuff in there. The, the first thing that he mentioned, you know, when he was running, he got called every name in the book. And I think we're at a point now, I've realized that if the left is not calling you those names, it means you're not doing enough. You know, like if you're not getting called those names, then you're not fighting hard enough. You know, that's that's like the you should wear that as a badge of honor, honestly, because uh, that means that you're effective and that you're actually saying something and doing something meaningful. Um, and then the other thing was, you know, he was talking about um, Bob Watson. That is such a great point. I mean, the reason that we're here at Funhouse Pizza, can we have a round of applause for yeah, Funhouse Pizza? Good job, Jim Dingman. The reason that we're here is because this is another business that supports our values, uh, supports America first, you know, and supports what we're fighting for. So make sure that you're, you know, going out there, you know, who, who you buy your house from, who you buy your car from, who you buy your insurance from. Which radio station you listen to. Which radio station you listen to. <laughs> <laughs> what podcast you listen to. You know, uh, just, you know, do that little bit of extra work, if at all possible, if you have the opportunity to, to research uh, what these people believe in, who are they donating their money to. And, and that's, I think, in a big way, how we're going to continue to make a difference in, in the culture. Jeff Coleman, are you coming up here? Or? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Jeff Coleman, state representative. Woo! Hey, thank Which you. Which district? I get confused. Thank you. Uh, I'm on District 32. 32. That's yeah, where I live. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> As uh, up until up until December, and then you're no longer in my district. You kicking me out of your district? I, I'm sorry, Dale. <laughs> <laughs> Has to be that way. Was it something I said? <laughs> It's what you didn't say. Buddy. I understand. I understand. <laughs> so, Jeff, what's going on at the state? Absolutely. I know it's an open-ended question. <laughs> yeah, absolutely nothing. Yeah. Yeah, we, we had a good year from the House side. We got a lot passed. But, you know, as the Senate was talking about the district maps for the congressional right. side, it was yak, yak, yak all day long. So they were about a month and a half that they actually wasted our time. And... Because of that time frame, we didn't get anything done. We, I think we ended up having 59 bills passed, of which 23 of those were the budget. Okay. So we didn't get a lot done this year. It was really disappointing. Although there are some of us who like it when government doesn't get a whole lot done. Yes, that is true. <laughs> but when it comes to my bills, yeah. 
Yeah, I understand. It's disappointing. <laughs> so what is it you want to get done? Well, I've got two pri uh, priorities. One of them is th my um, assessment bill, which actually is not a bill. It's an HJR, which means that it comes to the people that, for them to vote on. But it caps how much the county assessor can raise your assessment value. Yes. So, yeah, what, that, what it caps it to is 2% per year or CPI, whichever is lower. Yeah. So the maximum you'd have to pay or the maximum increase would be 4% every two years. Now, when, when I was on city council in Blue Springs, we had something called the Hancock Amendment. How does that affect this? It, it wouldn't affect it. There is some effect for the schools and such. Um, because the Hancock Amendment, I thought, capped it as well. It, it does, but only to an average. I think it's 5.75% is the max that it caps it. So anything over that, you're still going to get taxed at a higher rate. Okay. All right. So, and then the other priority is my human trafficking. Um, everything that has been done in the past has always gone after either the victims or the prostitutes or the, the human traffickers. And the problem with the human trafficking is that there's so many layers that it's hard to get to them. And then, of course, the victims, they don't, everybody thinks that they're, it's their choice. 99% of those women or children, it is not their choice. And so we're going to go after the people that are buying the sex. We're going to make them pay. We're going to, right now, it's a, it's a misdemeanor if they get caught. So depending on the age of the person that they are buying the sex from, it's, it can go up as high as a B felony, and it's always going to be a $5,000 fine. So we're going to make it more difficult and make it to where they don't necessarily want to go out and buy that sex. And then if we get away, if we get that demand away, then there won't be any reason for that to continue on. All right. Where are you at in your term? I am uh, just finished up my halfway point, so i got two more terms left. Okay. Well, congr yep. best of luck. Thank you. All right. And thank you for having me on and well, thanks for stopping big, by. Big Always surprise. Jeff thank Coleman. you very thank much. Jeff Coleman, ladies thanks, and gentlemen. Thanks, guys. All right. Well, we promised you a lively open mic night. Rachel, we got, got it. We, we got the people of Johnson County. Next. You're going to talk right into that mic, and you're going to be loud. Oh. Do you have kids? Can you? No. You don't have kids? I don't. Do you want some? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you very much. I appreciate okay. it. Okay. So tell me about We the People of Johnson County. I know Kurt knows more about this than I do. Absolutely. It's Johnson County, Missouri, so that you know. Oh, Johnson County, Missouri. That's yeah. right. You went down there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can you hear me? Can you? We, no. Okay. Hold on. Um, bottom line was, in uh, I, I, I lived in Kansas City for all of my adult life, and 10 years ago, I married this handsome cowboy back there, and he dragged me off to a farm in Johnson County, Missouri, which is includes Warrensburg. Right. And the bottom line was, when all of this absurdity started happening with our country, I was about to explode, and I said, babe, if I don't do something... I'm going to explode. And he said, I know you are. Please do something. Well, clearly Please. you didn't explode, so you no. must have done something. Uh, so the, we started um, We the People of Johnson County, Missouri. And that particular entity has meetings. We have meetings three times a month, or on the third Monday of every month at 7 o'clock at the Johnson County Fairgrounds. And I'll give the fairgrounds a plug. They have a wonderful venue there. So if you ever need stuff for a wedding or whatever, let me give them a plug. Um, I'm wedding down. I'm on my third. I'm done. Okay, well, I'm <laughs> That's okay. You can have a party. But one of the things that we realized is all of a sudden it came up that there was going to be this drag queen. Well, at our meetings, what we do is to bring in speakers who say the truth who actually tell the truth because you don't get a lot of that in the media as you know because there have been millions of dollars of our tax money poured into the media to make sure that they say what the left wants them to say um, and that's a reality I'm not spreading lies there that's something I've I've actually read and seen and Mark McCloskey mentioned that when he yeah. spoke at our meeting last night but anyway so this drag queen came to town big show and they said for all ages bring the kids drag queen shows for children and I said that is horrible that is not okay so 
bottom line, we organized a bunch of people. We went with our signs and we picketed and some of the people prayed and did whatever they felt like that was a good thing to do. Since then, here's the really, really good news. Number one, one of the uh, Culver's was one of the sponsors. So we've gotten the name of the person who owns that Culver's and a lot of Culver's around Lee Summit. And we're gonna be writing them letters and just saying, this is not okay. Do you realize what your manager signed you up to sponsor? Mm. Do you know? And then the other thing is Central Bank in Warrensburg um, was another sponsor. And a number of people have gone to Central Bank and taken their money out and said, this is not okay. We don't approve of this. This is not what needs to happen. And the Elks Lodge was the venue for it. And boy, did they try to separate themselves from any of it. But the thing is, if you're a lodge, you have the opportunity to give somebody business or not give somebody business. So you still have a choice. So that's what we did. And we feel like we've gotten some results. And that's pretty exciting. Um, the I, And I just got to speak with Doug back there, which was, that was pretty cool, because maybe we might have him come and talk at our, one of our We the People meetings about uh, Convention of States, because that's something there's a lot of bull out there about. There are some who say, oh, it'll save the country. And then there's another group who says, if there's convention of states, the communists will take it over no. and we'll be lost. No. And so yeah. I want Doug to come and talk and tell us truth, yeah. truth about what's happening. Well, Absolutely. truth matters. You yeah. think? I do. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. We, that's one of the founding principles of this podcast. That's number one, in fact. Tell the truth. Yeah. Well, I mean, how simple is that? <laughs> Absolutely. And that's ours as well. Yeah. And one of the things I wanted to make sure that you guys know about, and I'm not sure how to do something about it yet. So if anybody knows, catch me and tell me what I can do to change it. Number one, Dr. Simone Gold. Anybody heard that name? She, okay. She is a physician who started America's Frontline Doctors and was one of the first groups to start helping people realize you need early treatment for COVID. There's ivermectin, there's hydrochloric, hydrochlorothiazide. There are a lot of treatments for it. Don't die, please. There's no need. There's no need to die. And now then she has also started on the fact that, well, I might get egged for this one. I don't know. But that the vaccines honestly are not helpful. They are neither safe nor are they effective. And I spent about mm, 20 years in pharmaceutical company doing phase three trials. And so I can tell you these, these medications never went through any of those trials. And there are more seen adverse events out there than you can shake a stick at. Well, I had all three, but I have not grown a tail yet. Well, yeah. don't get any more. <laughs> okay. Yeah, seriously. That's all I, I don't to. think I've grown a tail. Anyway, so Dr. Simone Gold was kind of the forefront of this. She went to hear Donald uh, Trump speak January 6th of the famous January 6th event, yeah. and she, um, she was supposed to give a talk about American frontline doctors. And all of a sudden, after Trump talked, they said, no more talks, no more talks. Boom, that's it, no more talks. It's like, well, okay. So she went with a group that kind of was meandering down to the Capitol, and she thought, you know what? I could give my information at the rotunda. So she went into the Capitol. Police were telling them, come on in, come on in, come on in. And so she went in, and she gave her presentation at the rotunda. She today, as of yesterday, actually is freaking in jail for 60 days because she breached the Capitol. And they are trying to make it such that she will never be able to have a license to practice medicine again. Wow. This is communism, pure and simple. That is, that is exactly what it is. All right. And the other person, and I'll be really quick because I know I've been yakking. But anyway, the other person to, to give your prayers to is Dr. Peter McCullough. Anybody heard of Peter McCullough? Yep. Okay. Peter McCullough is one uh, is the, the physician who started Frontline COVID Critical Care Physicians. And he also was showing that there were lots of medications that are out there to treat COVID and make you better. And he was shut down and they made him leave his hospital. They, the hospital threw him out where he worked, even though he was the most published cardiologist in the United States. Crazy. And now they're also, the licensing body for physicians is trying to get his license. They're trying to take his license. 
This is communism in the biggest, baddest, nastiest, crappiest form possible. And the reality is we are in a civil war. There's no guns firing, but we are in a civil war. And you better realize that. And you better do what Ryan said. Take action somewhere, someplace, somehow to do something. Because otherwise, I don't think we will make it as a republic to the end of this particular ma previous vice president's yeah. All Rain. right, Rachel. So, okay. Big hand. Okay. Thank you, Rachel. And this is this is We the People. If you ever want to come join us, please do. Our Facebook page is We the People. Clever, huh? Of Johnson County, Missouri. We the People. Strong Cheers. words. They start the uh, Constitution, right? Damn straight. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> to again, just just echo what both Rachel and Ryan were were talking about. Just having the, the courage of your convictions to, to do something and take action. I mean, the, the whole drag queen with kids stuff is just like, if that's not a bridge too far, then I don't know what is. And uh, we're, we're very thankful to have people like uh, we, the people of Johnson County, Missouri, and others. There have been protests at events all across the country in Texas and California um, and other places where people are like showing up in force and like doing something about it, you know, putting themselves physically in the way, causing a scene, uh, you know, nonviolently, of course, but, but you know, uh, that we need more of that because this is unacceptable and, and it's being funded and supported by all of our major institutions in America. So we need to do something about it. All right. Listen, I want to thank all of you for coming tonight. I think we've heard a lot of voices here tonight. Was any, anybody we overlook? Anybody else want to jump in? Huh? All right. Well, you're back. Oh, I you wanted to, uh, yeah, I, I, I wanted to uh, give a plug for Jeff Coleman, too. If you support what Jeff's doing, he has a fundraiser on Thursday from 4 to 6. Is that right? 4 to 6 p.m. on this Thursday at Frontier Justice in Lee Summit. So if you support Jeff, uh, go out on Thursday. Frontier Justice in Lee Summit. All right. Listen, I want to tell you, the reason we want to thank Jim Dingman and Funhouse Pizza, please give him another big round of applause. Absolutely. My dear friend, Bob Watson, thank you so much for believing in the podcast. And some of our other friends here uh, tonight, you may be hearing from in the future on the podcast as well. Uh, we started it on uh, Inauguration Day 2021, right? And um, if you missed that first episode, you should go back and listen to the first episodes because I think we did a good job of tearing apart the Constitution and what's really important about this country and the way it's constructed and the way that we see it. Uh, but I had five guiding principles when we started this podcast. And number one, uh, as we just mentioned there with uh, Rachel, is tell the truth. It, it's really simple. Tell the truth. Second. No name calling. If you listen to all of our episodes, we do poke a little fun at Joey B once in a while, but we don't call people names and we don't question the other side's patriotism. That does not help us. We call out hypocrisy wherever it exists, and God knows there's plenty of it. We defend the principles of smaller government, strong military, reasonable legal immigration, law and order, and a market-driven capitalistic economy. That's one long sentence, but that's one of our guiding principles. And I will say this last, I unashamedly love my country and will always put it first. Woo. Amen, right. brother. And we always end with something to kick this thing, so I'll kick it with this. Dan Wassler was the longtime general manager at KFKF, a dear friend of mine. He hired me 27 years ago, and he had a piece of art in his office, and the inscription on it said, it is by the real that we exist, it is by the ideal that we live. We at Dale Carter's America fight for the ideal. And that's why we're here tonight. That's why you're here tonight. We gotta continue to fight for the ideal. And until next time, my friends, this is Dale Carter's America. The views expressed on Dale Carter's America are Dale's and Kurt Wheeler's. They do not necessarily reflect the views of KFKF or Steel City Media. Comments can be sent to Dale Carter's America at gmail.com. Check back for weekly episodes. Subscribe, spread the word, and give us a five-star review. Thanks for being a part of Dale Carter's America.